Hello, everyone. This is Yusai. Welcome back to Let's Talk. And this week we have a special edition on Giving Back Thursday because Tuesday is just not enough. We're giving back every day. We're focusing on talking to people who are restaurant owners, restaurant tours, and food industry how they continue to give during this time and how they adjust their businesses. Today, my guest is Marissa Permer. It's so hard for me to say because I'm Chinese. I'm gonna do that again. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, two R's in one letter and one word. <laughs> My guest today is Marissa. It's like there's an R in Marissa too. My gosh, you're making it easy hard for. <laughs> Sorry. Here we go. I'm here to complicate things. My guest today is Marissa Hermer. She, you might know from the Housewife of London, and she lives in Los Angeles now. And there's a restaurant tour of two amazing restaurants that we're gonna learn all about them. So tell us, what are you doing these days? <laughs> these days are different than other days. This morning I, um. Gardens. I picked a lot of flowers in our garden for the weekend tables and went on a walk with my children. And I've got to say, I think, I mean, yes, we work in the work in an industry that has probably been one of the most hardest hit. I don't know if there's one, if we get a prize for that, but um, generally we're healthy and the kids are thriving and we're spending the morning picking flowers and that's, it's okay. We're okay. That's amazing. Let's, let's not forget your restaurant tour, and that is that means you have multiple restaurants. There's one in Palisades yes. called Drake Scott, and then there's one in West Hollywood, which is just down the street from my house. Ava, uh, um, Alaveta. Alaveta. She's going to make it hard for me to speak English ah. today, I'm telling you. <laughs> Alaveta. And, and you are in the industry that's most impacted right now. And along the way, something beautiful comes out of it. And that's what I want to talk about today. Because I know that um, I'm a contingently involved with the restaurant stuff because I have a cooking show in Asia. I don't have a restaurant, but a lot of my friends in the business in the very beginning of this pandemic really, really got scared. What's next? What do they do now? Because you have employees that need to have paychecks and government support is not quite ready to support the industry. How did you start it? in the beginning to start to adjust? Look, I think it's, you know, it was incredibly challenging and that's not to say it's still not. Um, we as anyone who lives in, works in the hospitality or the restaurant business, we are, we are required to be experts and masters in the art of preparation and planning. I mean, that's just what we do. And so then March happened and we sort of, threw our hands up in the air. I mean, we, we, we didn't know what to do. We don't know when this plane from hell will land. And when it does, we don't know what that will look like. And so while we can't plan and while we can't prepare for anything, and that's sort of what has always been our guide, we do know how to cook and we know how to connect. And how and to I, feed people. And we do, and we know how to feed people and we know how to eat and we do know how to connect with our communities and our communities depend on us. Mm. Um, they depend on us in the Pacific Palisades and what the West LA and also the West, our new restaurant in Melrose, not just to, as part of the food chain, but also I think as a, as a sense of nostalgia, as a sense of place. And so while we can't, you know, we didn't close because we do feel a responsibility to our employees and to our guests and to our vendors and to our farmers. And how can we keep keep that sort of machine going? Well, it's um, interesting you said that. Our doors. So it, we, I, I love ahead. what you just said. I want to touch on that because a lot of people are not talking about it because by simply closing your door of restaurant, it's not the restaurant business, the only place that gets affected. We're talking about chain reaction that happens, the food suppliers, the food delivery people, and then all the way down to the farmers in the Midwest or the local farm that we always support, and especially your restaurants, use a lot of local restaurant, uh, local farmers, and, and, and that's how they sustain their living. And that chain effect is so ever important for people to know. So by simply knowing that restaurants close, know that how many other people along the way is being affected by it. So by you taking charge and say, we're not gonna close, we're gonna pivot, we're going to continue feed people, but making adjustments in order to do that. It really helps not just your community, but contingently all the community around you. Absolutely. I mean, it wasn't really a choice for us. It was, we were never going to close. Obviously our main service, 
we're not we were not prepared for this we unlike john we were not and are not a <laughs> curbside pickup or takeaway restaurant i mean both mm. restaurants are very much dine in they're very much experiential yes. restaurants and so we quickly had to set up an online you know delivery service um and just pivot in new ways but equally we've had incredible support from our communities who really want a taste of the Draycott or they want a sense of all about it at home. And so we've been able to do that with their support. And incredibly enough that, that right now is when people really need a piece of that in their home. We all forced to cook the first couple of weeks and we all then start getting tired of cooking ourselves. <laughs> and then right. through that time, I think timing's incredible. Through that time you adjust it. And isn't it incredible that if this time didn't happen, that part of the service of pickup would not be in your DNA. And now it is. Never. And isn't it funny that in our business, we take years to set up a restaurant. We take two weeks to pick a tablecloth. We take forever to design website and logos. And then you launch the business. But I'm this like, time. I think we launched our online businesses in two weeks. And you know what? <laughs> we'll always keep them now. I mean, forever. Oh. Because, I, because we have to, because who knows when this is going away and also when it is coming back. But equally, why won't you have the Draycott at home? Or why wouldn't you want to have, you know, all of that around your kitchen table? You don't always want to have, you know, that kind of juju night, but I guarantee you, you always want our pasta. You want the taste of, you want to taste of luxury in your own humble home. As I think that is so important. Yeah. Because I think once this is over, that we're all going to rush out and get, experience the life of tasting food again and community again. And there will be a moment that we want to take that back home to where we, we've been the last eight weeks. And that, yeah. the nostalgia of being home, it will come back. We're going to miss this time when this time is over. I truly Absolutely. believe it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I get to see that with the time you spend with your kids and then you know, the, the forcefully you don't get to go anywhere because you're not a teacher as well as a food delivery person as well as a restaurateur. You're wearing every hat and every ribbon, every bow yes. that you can possibly have to be able to stay positive and for your kids. And we had an offline conversation yesterday before we got on here, I asked you what you're doing. You said, my kids with me and we're delivering food. It, it, can I tell you, I know it doesn't sell much, but on my end, it all of a sudden, it put a spark in my, my, my brain. I go, wait a minute. Wait, she's being a mom. She's being a delivery person. And she's in charge of the restaurant crew and she's cooking. Oh my God, this is crazy. She's busier than ever I've been. This is, not, this is not easy for anyone. And you didn't have to take on the responsibility and feed the community, but you chose to do that. And I, I, I want to hear about that process, that decision making, and how are you affecting the community now? Gosh, do you know, I think um, as... Look, we own and operate two restaurants. We have clean kitchens. We have very talented chefs um, who can cook. And we have suppliers who can deliver. I have cars that can drive to deliver. And, and I also have, we also have an incredibly philanthropic and giving community. And so Initially, Matt and I just started donating food to the front lines and first responders and to those in need because we could and because there was a real need. And then I think I mentioned it to a couple of girlfriends or they called me when I was in the car and I said, oh, I'm just delivering food to cedar cyanide. And the next day I got a picture. She snapped a picture of her credit card and she said, put $2,000 on your neck on this credit card for your next delivery. And I was overwhelmed by her support and very grateful and then that same day i got another email from someone i'd never met i think i posted something about it and he said he can i can i call you i want to put one thousand dollars on my credit card to feed the local fire stations and i thought i think there's something in here because if i can do if we can do the back end um as far as the cooking and the deliveries um and, and the logistics and the organization there are people who want to help because yeah. right now we're told the only thing we can do is sit on the couch and watch Netflix. And that's not good enough for a lot of people. It's not good enough for me. I know it's not good enough for you. That's why we're here. It's not a good, good enough for a lot of people and people want to help and people can help by writing a check. People can help by donating to our fund. And so I set up a GoFundMe and we draw down on those funds to make these donated deliveries, which is we're grateful for because while Matt and I can do so much, our restaurant business is facing its own crisis of its own for obvious yes. reasons. 
So now we're able to keep our kitchen cooking and our managers delivering and, and we can get through this and we can help people in need. And it's incredible because in some ways the universe take care of us in one way or the other. They remind you what your capabilities are and what you need it. I went through the same thing in the very beginning of this pandemic as well. You know, after taking care of my family, making sure they were isolated properly because I had an older generation, got their alcohol, got everything prepped for them, food prep, extra refrigerator, because all my aunties, we have a huge Asian family. We put all the aunties all together in one home. So Sweet. we can quarantine them all. I mean, they're having a great time playing Mahjong every day. They're having a fabulous <laughs> time. I'll just get up. But, you know, but when that purpose was, was done, when I came home, I, I didn't know what to do. I then, the, 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 the idea of not creating as an artist anymore, the idea that I, I don't know what's next. And I said this on a previous talk before, is when I realized, stop asking what's next, asking what to do now became the new paradigm for me. And when I was able to change that, I started, let's talk. And like you, what happened was that people started writing in and said, what can I do? When can I come on here and talk about my foundations? Can you help me raise awareness because you have the audience? And because of that, we started an initiative that every single guest like yourself that comes on the show, we donate 500 masks to first responders. And the guest comes on and not only that they want to contribute, they donate. Mila Jovovich, like you, gets just crazy. I'm talking to her about this is I would love you for you to come on the show to talk about not your movies. I don't want to talk about that. I want to talk about you as a mom and what an iconic person you are, what you have done for me growing up as a photographer. Before my conversation was over, she emailed me through my email account through PayPal and there was $10,000. And she said, go buy as many masks that you can possibly get your hands on and get it to the people in New York. And we have done that. And that's, that's what everybody, not everybody can donate that much money, but what I just love the idea that so many people want to help, they just don't know how. And having you doing what you're doing, providing an avenue for people to help, it's amazing because we know that. You and I know that. A lot of people do want to help. They just don't know what to do. Yeah, it's not straightforward. And there's so much need. There's so many ways, but it's you sort of need someone to connect the dots. So we're here it, to help. It's true. And, and one thing I learned through this process of talking to restaurant tours and, and, and you guys who are delivering food is the delivery people. I, I, they are sending such amazing connection when they're dropping off the food. Yes, they can't give them a handshake. They can't give people the hugs. And a lot of people are getting food delivery to them because they're older generations. And I see how that connection becomes relationships. Waving through the windows and little Nas said, thank you for being here. Thank you for staying open. Thank you for delivering the food. It, from, from Project Angel Food to, to restaurants like what you guys are doing to John who's having nurses and, and doctors just come in and pick up a sandwich and be able to wave a hello and goodbye. It becomes a new routine. It becomes a new necessity. It's how we start to, to breathe the new mm -hmm. air, you know? And that's, that's what I think is the most beautiful thing that's happening in our food industry. Yeah, we're like, we're all heart. And I think anyone who works in an industry that is 90% passion, um, now it's all, now it's all love. Now we are there for the love of the game and we're there to connect to people. Um, I love nothing more, you know, than being a delivery girl because I get to go see the people who are supporting us. Or when I'm running the door at Olivetta or the Draycott, and I'm handing off packages, or my favorite part is when someone comes a little bit early or their, their food is still getting packaged up and I force them to have a glass of wine with me six feet oh. away. <laughs> Can Just, I see the delivery guy? Can yeah, I, see the delivery guy? Exactly. <laughs> I need to come and deliver so I get my glass of wine it's with you. It's really lovely, by the way. I mean, I have a good tequila. Um, <laughs> but I think those moments of sh just sharing a smile at a distance that's it. in real life, not virtually. I mean, I yes. love connecting with you here, but it's also nice to just to feel someone and have, be in that energy and vibrate in the same way. But what I absolutely love that both of your restaurants are considered fine dining. Is consider, it has an echelon feel. You're coming for a true experience, but now you're taking that experience and share it with everyone in the community that will want a piece of that. And that's really great because I feel like through this pandemic, classism has kind of set aside. We're all okay. at the even playing field. You can eat the most beautiful couture as well as me. I can have the most beautiful piece of steak at your restaurant and I can also have it at home. And that, that, is, that is so resoundingly beautiful that, mm -hmm. that, that we have created this environment that we're no longer 
judgments. We put the judgment aside, right? And 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 for everybody's different. Some people may not have the finance to be able to live that, but some people want to live their best life still through this pandemic. And there's no judgments. You get to choose to go pick up a sandwich down the street or order a pizza, or you can come to you. You know, go and live that experience. Because nobody says that during this pandemic you have to suffer, and that suffering is determined by how you want to handle it. You can be at home and just like you said, watching Netflix and depressed, or you know what, order yourself a nice meal and and get on the phone with your friends, with your with your family, and have a Zoom dinner together. I had a dinner date the other day on Zoom, so you know, nice. <laughs> but, but that's I think we all become more creative. And through that creativity, we're, we're finding ways to connect in a way that we need. And, and, and we all will get through this. We do. But through this process, we, we, I, I am so, I'm so proud of us in the entertainment industry. You've been in the entertainment industry. You are on TV. You know that through that process, you have garnered this, this fame that able to put it to good use. You know, your, the awareness that we have. I didn't know. I gotta be honest with you, Marissa. I did not know the social media influence I had. Yes, I have mm -hmm. some followers, 500 some thousand followers, but I didn't realize the impact if I begin to use it for the positive, rather than just go, look at my picture, guys. I'm really good at taking photos. <laughs> and, you know what I mean? I mean, that's what we do, right? Look at what I'm wearing yeah. today because Gucci sent me a free shirt. But when I put a voice out there to make sure that that stores when they close is to help and, and, and support the employee and give them all these two weeks pay. It actually happened. It actually happened because of one tweet. And I went, oh my gosh, I need to do something more. And, and how can I continue to do that? Not just in the fashion community that, that I talk to models. And, and then I started spreading the news to talking to you and talking to the food industry. And, and know that we're all changing and we're all ever evolving and, and we're all trying to get on a better path. We, I really feel that way. I think we'll get there. I think this is, this is a, I mean, this is a terrible time for all the obvious reasons, but it's a magical, beautiful time if we can learn and grow from this. And there's no way that we, we can't. I mean, it's happening. We're so resilient. That's one thing we are. And especially for the New Yorkers out there, I'm not there with you guys, but I know you, you know, you've gone New Yorkers. I mean, the world's resilient human beings they gone through September 11 they made it through that and now every day in the afternoon when I hear that sound on, on everybody's Instagram live but clapping to the nurses and the doctors it just brings me so much joy to know that community is so supportive uh, we're very fortunate in Los Angeles that that we don't have the hot spots like into New York but we're all trying to take our part in one way or the other as sending masks to to the east coast and you continue to feed the community around you the firefighters when i see those pictures you post with the firefighters and the, the emts and they truly are the heroes these days we're just doing heroes. As much as we they can. are heroes i mean they are i talk with these men and women at the hospitals and obviously the firefighters and the ambulance drivers and they're going, I mean, when I, I get nervous when I go into the grocery store, I feel like I mean, you know, I wear a condom over my body, like hazmat suit. And I'm like, in and I feel like I'm going to war. This is their daily job. The anxiety that they, that I know they feel because they share this with me when we're delivering food is just, it's, it's awful. And these little moments where they have, where they see that someone cares about them. And it's not just me who cares about them because I'm not funding this all. It's everyone who is contributing to our GoFundMe is from around the world is rooting for them. And that, that is inspiring for them. And they tell me, they said, this is like a light in our day. It makes such a difference. Those little moments to pay it forward, whatever we all can do in our little way is it makes a difference. And what's incredible through this is that you are teaching your children, you're teaching your kids that what is important, the value of it, and the fact yeah. that they're, they're excited to be in the car with you. I've seen them sitting in the car from a distance, a safe distance, and just waving at, at the first responders and, and knowing that she, this is her responsibility now. And what a great lesson. And what a, a great lesson. I mean, I'm not teaching them how to read. I'm completely failing at their actual academics. <laughs> <laughs> but can I tell you this lesson? <laughs> they, know how to give back. they can learn from books any day, but for them to learn from a life experience now that they can reflect back at this is the time that the universe needed us to step up and do what we need to do at such a young age, 
it's incredible blessing. And they're lucky to have you, a mom who's doing all the right things and, and, and supporting the community because we're all trying. You know, I know some days, I'm sure there are days you're just like, I need five minutes before I get in that car and drive. <laughs> I do love what I do, but I need a minute. I just need a minute. And there's the same thing here. Some days I just say, I want to be five minutes late to the live show. I just need a minute and then I can give. But the fact is knowing much as we give, it's tenfold that comes back. And I just know that it's, it's so rewarding, you know, interviewing Yanni Kim, our friend, and, mm -hmm. and interviewing John, and these other community of people all you know, and, and, and hearing the, the efforts of Project Angel Blue started helping with AIDS epidemic now to COVID-19, mm -hmm. a continuation of support. It's, it's humanity at best. It mm -hmm. truly is humanity at best. And if this, if this is what it took for all of us globally, not just in California, New York, but globally to be aware what we do impacts all of us, it is not a such bad thing. Now, I'm so sorry for the people who have lost loved ones. I don't take, I would not take anything less away from that. I'm talking about in terms of philosophically what we can learn from this process, you know? It's, it's resoundingly it, 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 it experience and, and, and we're constantly learning. We're constantly learning. And, and I wanna thank you so much for, for putting your best foot forward and feeding the people out there and continue to not dilute what you do. And you're giving the best of the best uh, of your restaurants. And I, I can't wait to come and sit with you. I can't wait for you to come. Wine. <laughs> 30. I, I will, I promise I will. And, and this is, this is the time that we will treasure and learn and we will learn that how important connection is. And, and I hope that all of us extend that the moment we can to just give each other hugs and be kind to each one, each other as we continue to grow through this process, you know? Yeah, I hear and, you. And, I'm and, 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 and I'm so happy to hear, most important thing I'm happy to hear is that the food industry is not taking this time to do an action that only for this time. It is an action that will continue and live through a part of their DNA. And yeah. what a re interesting and beautiful way to reset a philosophy of what the food industry should be like. And, and we know how competitive it can be. And we know how, how great kindness can really help everyone in the kitchen, in the back, as well as in the front. Yeah, I think we're all on the same team. I mean, we speak to our, our fellow re restaurant tour, or restaurants in Palisades Village and all of our friends on Melrose Avenue in West Hollywood all the time. We are here together. I mean, we're all, we're all gonna get through this together, but also in our, in our restaurant sector, it's like we are cheering for each other. We are ordering each other's food. <laughs> we are like rooting for each other. Oh my gosh! We've Kimchi all avocado. Do it. We can do I mean, it together. Avocado is giving service to the staff to go to order the food, and I am privileged enough to be on that list so that that I don't have to go out and shop. That she's actually helping me ordering the food so we can come here so I can spend more time here and try to inspire and help other people through my way. Amazing. I think that's what that's what community really is. And this is what this pandemic has really brought us all together. And I want to say thank you so very much for taking your time. And I'm sure you have lots of deliveries to do. <laughs> and, and going later this afternoon. <laughs> well, keep up the amazing inspirational work and let us all I'll follow your best foot forward and, and continue to, to share your love with everyone through your food. Thank you so much. And, and I know all of us appreciate it. And especially the first liners that they, they get to be part of your journey. And that's all what we're doing, going through a journey together. Thank you. It's so nice to see you, sort of. <laughs> see you we'll in see real life soon. soon, I hope. We will, over a great glass of wine. Bye, darling. Thank you.